assembled in front of you uh, some reenactors, some Civil War reenactors from the Champlain Valley Historical Reenactor Group. We're based here in Vermont, and uh, we do events all over the country. Well, primarily here on the East Coast, but the Northeast, and then we go down as far south as Virginia and North Carolina. My name is Lieutenant Stephen Smith. I'm the commanding officer of the 2nd Mississippi. That's a, a, a unit that is in the Champlain Valley Historical Group. Uh, the men you see presented in front of you are from the 61st Georgia, 2nd Vermont Infantry, and we also have a gentleman dressed as one of Wheat's Tigers, Louisiana Tiger. That's the Louisiana Zouave outfit this gentleman right here has on. So it's a real pleasure to have him here. Keep an eye on him because Wheat's Tigers were known to be rather boisterous and crazy and anything went, you know, if you offend him, you'd probably want to start a fist fight with him. <laughs> now, as the lieutenant here, Mike Frisbee of the 2nd Vermont Infantry, gathers the men, this is how Confederate, or not Confederate, but both Union and Confederate soldiers fell in. They fell in as one line, and keep in mind here, Tension Company! Keep in mind here that they would be forming as a company, the typical strength of a company, both north and south, would have been close to 100 men. So this is just a small representation of what that would be. Now, he just gave the order, attention company, shoulder, arms. And the men now go into that, order, arms. that position You'll notice that some of the Confederates who are wearing everything else but blue, but a whole lot of everything else. Shoulder, arm. The Confederates are performing what's called uh, shoulder arms from the Gillum's Order, Manual of Arms. Arm. Just to make it more confusing for you, during the Civil War, right before the Civil War, there were several Shoulder, different Manual arm. of Arms. So depending on where the soldiers are from, Georgia, Vermont, New Hampshire, New Jersey, they might all have their own unique uh, manual of arms that they're following. They could be doing the same thing, but differently. The Union soldiers are doing maneuvers from what's called the Hardy, H-A-R-D-E-E, -E, manual of arms. Order, arm. Before the Civil War started, there was really no standing U.S. Army, and what there was, it was very tiny. Shoulder, Most of the states organized their own militia organizations. Shoulder, we just came back from Manassas, and the Battle of Manassas that was fought 150 years ago, one of the unique things about the Battle of Shoulder, Manassas arm. is all the units were different. There was no real blue, no real gray. Four. Union, Union soldiers wore gray. In fact, the Vermont infantry color for their militia units before the war started was gray. If the 2nd Vermont infantry was standing here in their pre-war outfit, you would swear they were Confederate. They looked that much gray. Of course, in that battle, lots of confusion. People shooting each other, the wrong, the wrong side and whatnot. In fact, in fact, at Manassas, the gentleman here in the middle wearing the blue shirt, the, the blue with the black trim, he represents a, a soldier from the 27th Virginia, and that's the uniform that they wore. This fellow here is wearing what's called an overshirt, and he's representing a soldier from Mississippi. Now. The other two men down here wearing the, the, the checkerboard shirts, mm -hmm. <laughs> they, are, they are Georgians. And they are notorious for not following orders. And notorious for always talking over the officer. Yeah, see? That's your cue. <laughs> Ain't had nothing but army bread for a week. You promised us chicken if we look good out here. <laughs> Rest chicken. Don't believe everything you hear, Private. <laughs> <laughs> he gets chicken, what do we get? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, <laughs> since, <laughs> since they're <laughs> union soldiers talking about what they get to eat, I guess that would be prime rib. Eat your hard cat. I do that in the beginning. The, third, the gentleman third from the left right here, now he's wearing an all jean cloth uniform, also representing a soldier from Mississippi. Have you ever heard of the saying, many different shades of gray? <laughs> that came from the fact that the Confederates just didn't have enough cloth to make a uniform of the same color and type. They had plenty of cloth, they just didn't have, they just didn't have a lot of one type, so they had to make their own. Jean cloth right here primarily comes in two colors, blue and brown. And it's the precursor of blue jeans that we have today, Wranglers. Goes all the way back to the beginning of that particular kind of uniform right there. Now one of the first things that a soldier learns how to do is the manual of arms. He has to fall in along with his comrades. He has to learn how to handle his weapon. And I'll tell you, this is no different than soldiers today. Soldiers today going into the U.S. Army with the same motion. Of course, the drill is a little different, but they have to learn the same thing. Fort arm. Shoulder arm. And hours and hours and hours and hours, day after day after day of this. Yes. When you read, when you read Why? Stories, so when you got in battle, you were fully prepared. Even then, the din of battle, I mean, it looked like organized chaos. It was. But this paid off in the field. Shoulder arm. Shoulder. <laughs> 